Hi there, kamusta? Ayan, so uh, we will continue our discussions for lesson 3 since we have discussed about the lesson 1 and 2 for uh, leadership and decision making. For, le for uh, lesson 3, we will be discussing about the theories of uh, leadership. So first, we have this contingency theory and uh, second is the situational leadership theory. So sa contingency theory, um, sabi niya dito, it is, uh, there is no one way or uh, style of leadership applicable to all situations. Leaders shall respond on the right course of action depending on some variables. So, ano ba yung mga some variables na ito? Influencing the situation. Ito na yan. Needs, context, and behavior. Context is about, context is about uh, the background. Okay? So, in other terms, um, ang contingency is about the possibility. So, ano ba yung leadership style na aakma sa situation? So, ang mga leaders, they are being adapted to what? To situations. So, sabi na nga contingency uh, theory, um, sabi niya dito, leaders response leaders respond on the right course of action depending on some variables. So, meaning, leader's response depends on variable of the situation. Nakafocus siya sa mga variables, variables or in other words, yung mga reasons behind the situation. Ano ba yung mga yun? Needs, context, and behavior. Ano ba ang kulang sa organization? Ano ba ang nangyari? Or yung background ng situation? What else? Um, papaano pinakita yung behavior sa isang leader? So, in that case, the leaders respond depende sa mga dahilan or causes of that situation. So, for example, um, ano ba? Wala nang pondong gagamitin para sa feeding program sa isang uh, programa o proyekto ng isang organization. In that case, anong dapat gawin ng leader? Una, titignan niya yung context. Ano ba yung uh, pinagmulan? Bakit, um, bakit wala na tayong pondo? So, give me the financial report of the organization. So, parang ganun. So, saan napunta ang ibang pondo? Then, the leader can either use this democratic leadership style para tawagin niya ang mga buong members to address the need, to address the need, and to come up with a solution. What possible solution can be drawn for the need of the organization? And that's how contingency theory works on leadership. Looking into what? The variables of the situation before the decisions are made. So, sa situational leadership naman, halos pareha sila ng contingency. Nga lang magkaiba sila ng focus. So, Ang contingency uh, based on situation, however, parang, uh, di ba, ang contingency based on situation then, However, sabi niya dito, based on some variables. Dito sa situational leadership, based on situations then, However, um, it is, uh, um, ang focus niya is on two factors, leadership style and maturity of level, maturity level of followers. So, uh, doon sa situational leadership theory, yun yung, uh, focus, yung variable naman niya is maturity level of the followers. Kumpara doon sa contingency theory, ang variable niya is needs, context, and behavior. So, nakita niyo na yung pagkakaiba. Merong apat na level of maturity of followers according to situational leadership theory. So, meron siyang apat. And this is the basis of the leader in what leadership style he would, he or she would use. Una, maturity level 1. Ito yung mga followers na non-motivated and uh, kawalan ng skills to complete a task. Kung ikaw ito, anong magiging leadership style ng isang leader na gagamitin niya. So, pwedeng autocratic kasi nga, dahil sa you have lack of skills, the leader 
can decide immediately. Okay, so he will use his opportunity, uh, yung authority, to decide effectively or immediately because you do not have that, you do not have that kind of skills he needs, diba? So, parang ganun. So, maturity level 2. Members are visionary but they lack necessary abilities. So, wow! Ang galing magsalita, ang galing magkuhan, pero ay hindi pala niya alam. Parang ganun. So, mga maturity level ng isang followers. Pa, paano na ulit? Parang ganun. So, maturity level 3 naman. Members are skilled. Wow! Skilled sila. Pero, unwilling to take accountability. So, nagpe-perform naman. Pero, ayaw tanggapin na kung for example, may nangyari is ayaw tanggapin na they are accountable to that situation. To every situation they are going to encounter na sila mismo yung nag-provide because they are skilled. So, saan ka dito? Maturity level 4. Members possess the right skills or talents and motivated to complete the task. So, wow, perfect. <laughs> Kasi nga, we have right skills, right talents, and you are motivated to complete the task. Ito yung mga levels, uh, maturity, of, uh, maturity level of followers na kinoconsider ng isang leader that uh, uh, help him decide what leadership style can be used. Okay? So, ito yung mga nag influence sa kung ano yung behavior or leader style na kailangan niya i-utilize. Next, transformational leadership theory. Ang transformational naman is focus on relationship between leaders and followers. That is a leader that is uh, which is inspirational, charismatic, and encouraging. Pag transformational, sabi niya, ito yung mga leaders na inspirational, charismatic, o, oh, ba? So, they are encouraging. So, yun yung sinasabi ng transformational. And because of that, nagkakaroon ng good relationship between leaders and followers. Sa transactional naman, from the word itself, transaction. So, Ang leadership action, ang leader's action are based on rewards and punishment. More on bureaucratic leadership ito. Bakit? Because of what? In which focus? <coughs> oh, excuse me, Bob. <laughs> okay, so, wala akong COVID. Kaya naman. <laughs> In which focus is on the supervision? organization and teamwork. So, bureaucratic siya kasi nga ang focus niya is organization, supervision, and teamwork. So, more on transactions. Kung uh, ang uh, magiging uh, response ng mga leaders when it comes to uh, their leadership, yung uh, style nila is based on reward and based on punishment. Gagawin ko to kasi may certificate Ay, wala pa lang certificate, hindi na lang. So, parang ganun. Magtitraining ka, walang certificate, so parang ganun. So, yun yung parang mga common sa mga leaders na na-encounter ko din in the uh, government service. So, kasi nga, pag mga may mga certificates, yun yung rewards nila, recognitions, they can use it for their promotions. Oop! Oh, Siyempre, ganun na, may mga tendency din na tayo na ganun tayo. Siyempre, kailangan natin ng uh, reward. Okay. So, transactional theory. Yun sinasabi ng theory na ito. What else? Behavioral theory, great man, and great theory. Sa behavioral, sabi niya dito, ang paniniwala niya is leadership is uh, leaders are made or leadership is learned. Natututunan ang leadership. So, ang effective leadership daw is resulta ng mga natutunan mong mga skills. So, in other words, leadership is learned. Sa great man theory, ito yung, oh, 
Leadership is learned. Sa Great Man Theory naman, ang sabi niya, leaders are born. Ganon din dito sa trait theory. Halos parehas lang sila ng, uh, ng uh, perspectives because sabi niya dito, leaders are born. Believes, uh, this theory believes that leadership is something gained from personality traits from birth. Ayan. So, for example, intellectual, yung mga nakuha niyang mga traits na yan, is from birth. So, it is something that you can learn. So, sabi niya, it is not something that you can learn. So, again siya dito. Okay, ito naman, common siya dito. Trait theory, ano naman to? Agrees that great man theory assuming that leaders are born. So, sabi niya, agrees. So, he agrees to this perspective. Individual excel in leadership based on certain traits, qualities, characteristics. Take note, characteristics. Like appearance, weight, so kung mata matangkad ka daw, more on, pwede ka sa leadership. Parang ganun. So, demographics. Kung uh, mas bata ka, ay, uh, kung yan, hindi mabwede sa, hindi pwede sa leadership. So, ganun ang mga trait theory na tinitignan ng uh, theory na ito. Okay. So, yun mga appearance. Let's go to lesson 4. Tapos na tayo sa lesson 3, di ba? Okay. Communication, coaching, and conflict uh, skills. Ano naman to communication? So, matagal na tong mga proseso na to, mga concepts na to. So, I know you are all familiar, familiar with this. So, process of conveying information. Hindi na natin to kailangang i-discuss kasi from the first time you enter in college, even in high school, you are talking about communications, alright? So, communication process, uh, role of communication to leadership. Ito, ito na lang, pagsaban natin. So, effective leadership requires good communication skills. So, kapag uh, magan pag maganda yung leadership na pinapakita, syempre, maganda rin yung communication skills dapat. So, um, hindi lang sa organization, also with the stakeholders. Ang mga stakeholders, pinag-usapan natin yung mga people. So, sino ba yung mga involved? Sino ba yung mga agencies involved? Negotiations. So, parang ganun. So, ganun ang importance ng communication to leadership or yung role ng communication to leadership. Factors or qualities on communication. Ano yung mga nagiging uh, uh, um, nakaka-influence sa communication or yung mga kailangan i-consider? It should be clarity, or clear on and simple personification, second person approach or direct approach. So, what else? Transparency, listening, feedback, and, and for inspiration. So, ganun ang mga factors na kailangan nating i-discuss and kailangan nating i-consider. Okay? So, uh, common na sa inyo yan? Common communication skills for leaders. So, ano ba yung mga kailangan nating mga skills? Active listening. So, alam ko, narinig nyo na yan. It involves focus, comprehension, and valuable response. So, hindi pwede yung iba yung ginagawa habang nakikinig, habang uh, nagkakaroon ng training o kaya seminars. Iba? So, what else? Uh, dapat marunong kang intindihin, umintindi ng mga sinasabi ng iyong mga leaders, yung iyong mga uh, managers o kaya yung mga heads, di ba? So, every time you need this kind of comprehension. What else? Storytelling. So, magkikwento ka ba? Kaya ba yan? So, Ang purpose nito is to make connections through what? Delivering value propositions. Ibig sabihin, when you communicate, you are building background or the context of your message. 
So before you deliver your message, you should know how to uh, parang build muna kung yung rapport. Alam mo ba yung maintindihan mo na yung ano yung sasabihin mo? Para mas maintindihan niya kung ano yung gusto mong puntahan or gusto mong sabihin. So that's storytelling na ginagamit ng mga leaders. Okay? So for example, yung presidente natin, di ba? Bago niya sabihin na bawal lang nito. Ang gagawin niya is magkukwento muna siya is uh, ito sa Davao. Ganun. Uh, uh. <laughs> di ka mo eh. Adaptability. Para akong masing dito ah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's my personality. Okay, so adaptability, flexibility to situations. Motivation, inspiring team. Ano niyo na yan? Open-mindedness, what else? Open-minded ka ba? Hindi <laughs> ka presentahan kita. Hindi. So it's about considering others' opinions and ideas in the business. Okay. So, empathy, uh, putting yourself in the shoes of others. Pinag-usapan na natin ito kanina. Delegation. So, take note na sa government, parating yung maririnig ang delegation. So, assigning of tasks based on expectation. Positivity, speaking and acting positively. Dapat sa pananalita mo pa lang, is you are building a positive environment. So, naririnig pa lang ng kausap mo is, wow, very approachable. Uh, so, uh, awareness. What does awareness? Awareness on what? Body language, reactions, and facial expressions. So, kung uh, nguwi-nguwi-nguwi yung kausap mo, anak ko, baka hindi niya naiintindihan. Kung yung uh, kila niya is uh, nag, uh, nag uh, ano bang tagalog doon? Nagsabsabatin, uh, nag, uh, sa salubong, ako, baka meron na siyang uh, ibang interpretation, diba? reaction and that. So, be careful and be aware of the non-verbal cues, non-verbal communication. True body language, facial expressions, and actions. So, there are methods of sending messages. So, meron tayong oral and written communication. So, face-to-face, meeting, presentation, telephone, sa written, memorandums, letter, report, bulletin boards, posters, and newsletters. So, question. How are we going to send messages effectively? So, sa oral communication, pinaka-importante dyan is very uh, develop the rapport. Pag sinabi mong rapport, silent T, it is something that receivers is comfortable in communicating with you. So, pukunin mo muna yung, uh, yung confidence ng, ng receiver nung nakikinig sa'yo. Yung trust niya. Diba? Paano ba i-build yung uh, trust? or kunin yung loob ng kausap mo o yung, kunyari, ako yung leader ikaw yung follower, syempre, hindi mo ako kilala, di ba? How, are, how am I going to uh, build rapport with you in order for you to trust me as your leader? What do I do? I will do what? Interview <laughs> Syempre, magtatanong-tanong ako Magkukan ako, magkukommunicate ko in a way na makaka-relate ka. Ano bang interest mo? So parang ganun. Interesado ka ba sa sa basketball, what else, sports, o kaya Dota, mga ganyan. So, syempre, ako naman, in order to build the rapport, kailangan ko maging uh, uh, flexible. So, kailangan ko, ah, may kailala akong ganyan. So, parang ganun. So, you are building the rapport. Mayroon kayong mutual understanding. So, mayroon, magkakaroon kayo ng mutual understanding and that becomes your rapport para may state mo yung objective mo and then transmit your message. As a leader, hindi, mahi- hindi ma- 
hindi madaling maging leader sa mga followers na mahirap kausapin at saka mahirap sumunod. Okay? So, ang kailangan mong gawin is to build the relationship with them. You need to build that rapport with them. So, uh, use the uh, my techniques. Yan, so, ang techniques ko minsan is uh, to build rapport is form. F-O-R-M. Family, occupation, recreation, then the message. So, family. Kamusta ng pamilya mo? Pag na-get, napan mo na yung, uh, kanya, yung, uh, yung, parang ay, confident siya sa'yo, kailangan magkwento ka rin, di ba? So, ah, ganito rin ako, ay, kanyang kabago, mga nga. So, you're building, you're developing that rapport with your follower, or even with your leader, di ba? So, para makilala ka rin niya. So, ganun ang developing your rapport. State your objective, transmit your message, di ba? Yung, yung form kanina, family, occupation, ano yung pinagkakabala nyo, yung not necessary yung trabaho, ano yung recreation, ano ba yung uh, kaina, kahiligan niya ngayon. So, then you transmit your message. So, check the receiver's understanding. Pag na-receive mo na yung, ay na-transmit mo na yung message, kailangan mo yun i-check yung understanding ng receiver mo. How will you going to do that? You can ask direct questions or paraphrasing. Ito yung uh, common sa lahat ng uh, mga communicators, mga leaders. They paraphrase. Also, di ba, magtitesis kayo? Uh, huh? You will uh, also encounter paraphrasing when it comes to research. It is used also in research. In order for not to be uh, sued with uh, plagiarism. Okay, so paraphrasing, uh, you are just rewarding the uh, statement. Diba? For example, instead na sabihin mong, do you want to understand, do you want, do you understand me? So parang ano, do you understand me? So parang, instead na sabihin mo yun, pwede mong i-paraphrase, pwede, pwede mong i-reward. So, pwede mong sabihin, um, what else? Ano ba? <laughs> Do you have any questions with my discussions? So, instead na tanongin kita na, do you understand what I'm talking about? So, parang ganoon. Hindi ganoon. Kasi nga, hindi maganda yung dating. In order for you to uh, check the receiver's understanding, you need to reword your questions. Okay? You need to paraphrase. Paraphrase it. Do you have any questions with my discussions? Is there anything you want to clarify? Di ba? Mas maganda pag ingat. What else? Get a commitment and follow up. Of course. So, kailangan mo na. Uh, ginagamit ito minsan madalas sa mga kwan. Negotiation. Transactions. Clients. Di ba? So, kung nasa marketing ka after this, o kaya nasa liaison officer ka, di ba? Lias ka ng lias. Ikaw yung nakikipag-communicate sa mga other agencies. And you need to build that uh, communication effectively. So, ganun na yung proseso. In getting a commitment and a follow-up, you need to provide also what? Deadlines or timeline of accomplishment. Kailan natin matatapos kaya ito? Kailan yung uh, pwede mong isubmit sa akin? So, parang ganun. So, uh, written communication. Set an objective for your communication. Sa unang paragraph, kailangan mong state yung purpose objective. Ano ba yung gusto mo talaga? Okay, this is to uh, dear uh, sir, great things. This is to inform you that I am going to leave for uh, I, I'm going to uh, apply for my study leave on uh, first semester of uh, year 2020, 2021, uh, 2021 to 2022. So, parang ganun. So, uh, for, parang yung purpose mo nandun na agad. Example, this is to signify my intention to apply for the position. Anan. So, this is to inform you that, uh, uh, 
blah blah blah. It is my intention to blah blah blah. In this regard, may I request permission to gather blah blah blah. Ganon. So yun yung mga simple uh, techniques or uh, adjectives or mga terms na ginagamit natin para sa sa mga written written communications. Last paragraph, middle paragraph, supporting documents, fax figures. So ano ba yung mga qualifications mo? For example, application letter, di ba? Una, uh, you, this is to uh, signify my intention to apply for a position of uh, middle paragraph supporting statements. Uh, I am a bachelor. Uh, I am a graduate of bachelor of degree of bachelor degree of public administration. Blah blah blah. I am a master of kanito ganyan. So I am a uh, I graduate as a cum laude. Kung kano mata na suma cum laude, magna cum laude. So kano na lang. So I pass my civil service examination. That's your qualification. Last paragraph, may be summary of major points and actions to be taken. So, sasabihin mo na doon, uh, for further questions and other uh, other uh, inquiries, you may uh, con- you may uh, contact me in this number. So, yung mga gusto mong uh, expect mga actions to be taken na kailangan uh, uh, yung mga expectations mo pa. So, what else? Right? To communicate, not to impress. Hindi to pagalingan ng ng uh, communication sa pagdating sa written communication. It's about uh, ano yung gusto mong sabihin. You are writing to communicate, not to impress. Edit your work and rewrite when necessary. So always remember to uh, double check your letters. Okay, so the message receiving process. We have listening, analyzing, and checking understanding. So, basic na lang yan sa inyo. Listening, madali lang yan. And analyzing, checking, understanding. So, pinag-usapan natin natin kanina. Watching and verbal cues. Ganyan. So, next tayo. Coaching. Now, ang coaching is based on feedback and communications. So, you are going to give your uh, um, you are going to give your insights or inputs based on the feedback and communications you have received so it is a process of giving motivational feedback to maintain and improve performance so you're giving that kind of advice or you are coaching them how to do this how to improve this so what are the steps we have coaching model. Step 1. Describe the current performance. Saan ka ba ngayon? Ano bang grade mo ngayon? Diba? 97. Wow! Awesome! <laughs> so, anong estado mo ngayon? So, para makita mo yung uh, yung context ng situation mo. Ano yung meron sa'yo? So, kung mag-coach ka, syempre kailangan mong alamin ano ba yung background ng kausa mo. Describe the desired performance. Ano yung gusto mong mangyari? Ano yung gusto mong uh, uh, um, resulta? Parang ano. So, ano yung kailangan mong uh, gusto mong ma-achieve? Diba? Pangatlo is you are going to get a commitment to change. Commitment in a way na ano yung mga steps na gagawin mo to achieve this change para makapagbago para maayos yung maayos yung mga problema so ano yung gagawin mo mga ways in order for you to cope with that struggles so for example na hirapan ka sa modules mo ano yung current performance mo ano saan ka na alin ba ang natapos mo one for out of five ilan yung natapos mo na so kunyari tatlo Ngayon, describe the desired performance. Kailangan ang, ang achievement or yung goal mo is to finish this. Five. So, yun yung desired performance mo. Ilan pa ang natira? Dalawa. So, ngayon, get a commitment to change. Anong gagawin mo? Ano yung mga ways in order for you to achieve this? Ano ba? Number one, magbibigay ka ngayon ng commitment mo. Uh, every 
every day I will allot 2 hours for my module. Diba? Para ma-achieve mo yung dalawa pa. Okay? So ngayon, as a coach, you are going to follow up based on your, on his or her commitment. So ngayon, nalaman mo yung background, yung context, and yung performance niya na gusto niya. Ngayon yung mga ways na kailangan niyang gawin, yun yung ipafollow mo. Okay? So ganun. Conflict management. Conflict occurs when there is disagreement and opposition. Of course, Kapag may disagreement and may opposition, magkakaroon talaga ng conflict. Ano yung mga styles na kinakailangan? Uh, mga ginagamit ng uh, karamihan. We have avoiding uh, conflict style, accommodating, forcing, negotiating, and collaborating. So, sa avoiding conflict style, ang concept nito is you lose, I lose. So, talo pareho. di ba? Avoiding, take note, ignoring the conflict rather than resolving. Okay? So, instead na ayusin yung problema, you are avoiding, you are ignoring. It's about um, parang pagiging passive behavior to. Sige lang, hayaan mo lang attitude. Parang ganun. Yung attitude mo na yun, hayaan mo lang. Ang nangyari, pareho kayong talo, pareho kayong pahiya. Diba? Nag-away kayo, hindi nyo ni-resolve, pareho kayong nakakaya. Diba? So, ganun ang avoiding conflict style. Ayaw mong isolve yung isang problema. Yung conflict. Accommodating conflict style. You win, I lose. So, nagpapabigay ka. Para, what? Alam mo yung you are resolving the conflict by passively giving in to the other party. So, para ma-solve yung conflict, magpapatalo ka na. Sige, ikaw na yung tama, ikaw na yung uh, matalino, ikaw na yung masipag, ikaw na yung guwapo, ikaw na yung maganda, ikaw na yung lahat. Ako na yung lows. Nakaka-relate ba kayo? So, ikaw yung nagpapatalo. Passive behavior na, sige, ikaw na yung tama, ikaw na, ikaw na, ikaw na, ikaw na rin ang may jowa. <laughs> Ganun ba yan? So, why do we do that? Because we try to please what? To please everyone. So, you are trying to please everyone because you want them to accept you. Okay? So, that is a passive behavior. Mapagparaya attitude. Ganun ba? Sinosolve ang mga problema? Ganun ba? Ganun ka ba? So, we have forcing conflict style. Ano naman to? You lose, I win. Ah, ikaw naman yung nagtalo. Siyempre, ako naman yung panalo. Ngayon, you are resolving the conflict by using aggressive behavior. So, yung attitude mo dito, yung personality or yung behavior mo is pagiging aggressive. Ang pagiging aggressive is about uh, doing whatever it takes to satisfy your own needs at the expense of other. Ano man yung mangyari sa kanya, ah, ako yung tama, ipaglalaban mo yung, yung sa tingin mo ang tama. Yung sa tingin mo, ikaw yung tama. So, ganun ang forcing. You are being aggressive. Oh, ikaw yung tama. Paglalaban mo, okay lang yun. Pero may matatalo. May mapagtuan. May merong uh, masasaktan. So, parang ganun yung forcing conflict style. So, so ganun. <laughs> You lose, I win. Negotiating conflict style naman. Ano naman to? You win some, I win some. Pareho tayo. Para tayong nanalo, pero konti lang. So, paano to? Resolving the conflict through assertive. Pagiging assertive naman. Give and take concessions. You win some, I win some. Um, parang uh, similar to sa compromising style. Yung tao. Parang uh, ganito siya. Sige, ikaw ngayon, bukas ako naman. Okay. O kaya, sige, tama ka ngayon, next time ako naman ang tama. Ikaw ngayon, yung uh, panalo, ako naman dapat, ikaw naman yung magpabigay. Next time. Parang ganun. So, the behavior is moderate assertiveness. 
taking consideration in each party. So, meron kayong agreement na na sige, ikaw muna ngayon. So, parang ganun. So, ganun ang negotiating conflict style. Collaborating naman. Ito na yung win-win situation. You win, I win. Jointly resolve the conflict with the best solution agreeable to all parties. So, agreeable to all parties. Gusto niya, gusto mo pareho. Okay? Gusto niya, gusto mo. Ay, jowa ka na. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang. So, agreeable to all parties, in other ways, uh, they, uh, yung uh, magiging resulta, yung uh, ways to solve the problem is beneficial to both of you. Okay. Win-win situation. The behavior is assertive and cooperative. So, ah, sige, ito yung possible na solution to our problem. Are you amenable with this? So, parang ganon. Yung uh, um, example niya. Okay? So, that's it for lesson 3 and 4. I hope you learned. And that uh, this is your learning activity. Sinan ko na sa inyo ito noon. Nauna na to. Okay? So, take the big 5 personality test. Copy the results. Determine all strong personality and justify the results. So, di ba, sa Big Five, merong ocean. Yung O, anong kwan mo doon? So, uh, low ba? Medium? High? So, determine mo. Copy mo yung results mo. And then, justify the results. Justify. Pa, paano mo i-justify? Pa, paano mo i-justify? You will cite some instances or circumstances and the uh, situations na ginawa mo yun. Meron ka nun. So, are you agree or not? If not, justify. If yes, then justify. Okay. So, uh, is locus of control important to leaders? Why? So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng locus of control? Pinag-usapan natin yan kanina. So, would you predict that a person with a strong agreeableness personality would be successful, successful provincial administrator? So, why or why not? Deadline of submission, Feb 26. Output, um, sent to my email. Okay? So, the format of the output is that, uh, ayan, nasubmit ko na rin sa inyo. And, um, Ang file ninyo na lang is uh, module 1, learning activity. Learning activity, module 1. And then, open and close parenthesis. Your name and your username and your uh, section. Um, section, okay? Yun lang, and thank you so much for listening. I hope na pinakinggan nyo yung 30 minutes video, 30 minute na video natin. I know yung iba, skip skip. <laughs> diba? Pero I hope na still you are watching these videos I have made. Okay, thank you so much for listening. And, uh, good luck for your next uh, mojo. And for your uh, summer success. So, what else? Thank you, Thank you.